talk about a piece that's actually finished and kind of show how all that might happen. Might be a good idea to go over here. Uh, this painting is called Horse and the Rider Are One. It started out actually as just these two panels were one painting. It was actually a phoenix. Not that that's so relevant now, but just to kind of talk to show how the process again evolves. There's uh, <laughs> uh, basically these top two were another painting working on separately. They were like a totem character and the, the butt of the horse here was just like a pallet on the ground actually. And I kept working on it. The phoenix started to turn into a horse at some point. I kept trying to force it into this area. But no matter what I did, it just felt goofy or too much like a pony or short or just not right. And I was definitely like into the idea of a horse. So it kept developing, developing. I tried all different things and finally I was like, oh, what, what, why don't I just see what would happen? Picked up the pallet off the floor, put that next to it. and was like, just drew the back of the horse in really quickly. And I, I really liked the form and a lot of that, a lot of, a lot of the process is finding an actual form that feels right, that expresses the feeling and just the length, the awkwardness of the horse really felt correct to me. So I, I kept going and it was developing quite nicely. Then next I was looking around the studio at the time, like I said, the other painting was off to the side and I was looking at the totem and I was like, oh, this, this would be funny if someone was actually riding the horse. I've never done a painting like that. So I started taking the heads and placing them above the body that was already there. And I was imagining like a cowboy on a horse, like sitting there kind of goofy. I don't know why, because I don't really paint goofy things, but that was my initial thought of the piece. So I'm playing games with it, putting them up there and kind of quickly went away from the goofiness, but started having these forms fill in and really, really started to like it and just started pulling it together basically. And then at another point I realized I'm not in all of my paintings, but if I'm in there, I definitely know my face when I see it. And out of all this, this definitely represented me. And when I was doing the totem on the side, this form represented me. And I started looking at the painting once it was all together, thinking like, whoa, this is so weird. I, I, I noticed myself twice in the same painting, which has never happened because I don't know, generally if I observe myself, I stop looking for myself. But since this came from disjointed, disconnected pieces, I was like, whoa, my God, the horse and the rider are the same person. And I, I seriously, I got chills. I felt so intense about it at that point that it was like a fever and I tied it all together. What I'd been working on for two months, I mean, all that work had been done, but then it tied together in a matter of hours. And the, the potency there to me was like at that same time, I was really acknowledging the, it, it, this point in my career where I've, tr I've worked with other people and I can work with other people friendly, but it's really hard for me not to be in the control role with my work or I've just been doing that so long, running my own show, organizing my own exhibits, doing all the footwork for myself, no agent, and just realizing like, no, this is you. You're the horse and the rider. You're the machine that creates all the work and you're the person that directs it. And this, it was just a real, I don't know what to call it, like an ingestion of that concept, that feeling, that knowing that, even though you've known it for a long time, it was a serious level of acknowledgement. So epic piece for me. So this is a painting called Bear Trap. It's from about four years ago. It's a pretty good example of work from that time period. A lot of the white has been applied with my hands, just some of the techniques going on. You can see underpainting of stuff that was important earlier that got pushed back symbols hiding in there like a Ouija piece and unlock they help I, I just I put them in there when I feel them rather than putting them in there for the purpose of trying to state something it's like if I have a feeling or an idea in my head whether it's real it seems relative to the story or not I'll just place it within the piece and see where it ends up and often this really helps with the story later because you don't know where things are going to end up I mean this figure was originally central but yet yeah, this guy ended up very prominent in the piece and just to look that he's looking at a heart and an unlock and an eye it brings about ideas in your head to what it might mean so a lot of the process is actually reflecting on what's left behind why did, why did this become so important or why is this piece and then what are the side things that happen where, where the objects end up and what the intention of the characters become by their alignment with the symbols or words the text.
So when, when working on the process, it's like once I've got a shape or I've gotten rid of some things that I don't want, I start to try and plant in imagery, ideas, whatever's on my mind, something that might have influenced me in the last couple days to try and give it some sort of direction. Once I do that, it's I'll follow that direction until it either becomes really exciting and I follow it out or it becomes uninspired and I try to think of a way to change the direction, maybe move towards another idea, plant other ideas within the painting so that I'm constantly kind of testing. Do I really like this idea or am I just choosing it because it's the first thing I thought of? I really want to reach something that's meaningful and important and potent to me a story that I don't know, not telling myself a story, but finding a story from the ram random imagery, the random colors, and letting that move me along even more than an idea.